Namaste. So now I want to talk about why this process of trying to wish upon a star or <laughs> manifest something like according to the secret, you know, just by wanting it, basically, why this doesn't work and how we can fix it, how we can make it work and master the process of manifestation through this concept of God GPT. Well, God GPT works by prompts. And a prompt in this context is the impressions that we absorb during the day that we take in and our attitudes and thoughts toward them and about them and how we recall or how we uh, judge these impressions uh, and when they go into the mind, when we go to sleep at night, how we're able to process them through dreaming and put everything into a seed, which is a prompt. And then when we go into deep sleep, sushupti, we bring that seed with us, and this becomes the prompt for God GPT. And God GPT will respond exactly according to the way the prompt is made. Now, the problem is most of us don't know how to make these prompts. And so we wind up getting garbage back, you know? The old computer saying, garbage in, garbage out. So this is certainly the case with God GPT. Now, God GPT can give us everything or anything. It can help us to become whatever we want to be. And the problem is we keep giving it prompts that bring us right back around into the material world. We think about our experiences every day, about the stuff that happened to us and how we felt about it, whether we liked it or we didn't like it or we don't care about it or whatever it is. And then we forget about it. We dump it into sushupti, which is uh, externally appears like ignorance. So a good example happened just last night. I met a monk on the plane coming back in the airport. And so I invited him. He, he was just coming to Sri Lanka for the first time. I, so I invited him to my house to help him get settled, you know, get his feet on the ground and, and find his next place to go and like that. Now, here's this boy. I call him a boy. He's probably in his 30s. <laughs> but to me, he seems like a boy. Um, and he's trying to do the monk thing, okay, which is cool. I totally respect it. Hey, I was a monk for five years in the Buddha sasana, and before that as a Vaishnava and so on and so on. I know about monastic life. I know what it's all about. So here is a young fellow, physically fit, you know, uh, in good health and everything, and he's trying to repress his sexuality. He's trying to ignore it completely. He's trying to deny the sexual functions of the body, totally. This is a very common thing. But what it does is it leads to a bunch of unwanted manifestations, unanticipated results from the God GPT. And so what we, we call this God vomit. <laughs> when you give a prompt to the the God GPT that isn't really what you want, but it's just sort of the things that happen to you, and who you happen to be, you know, and the things that just kind of drop out of the sky on you because of karma and stuff like that. Well, unless you engineer these prompts, uh, with a, a GPT class chatbot, you have to give very specific prompts for it to come back with uh, an appropriate answer. Huh? You have to tell it exactly uh, what you expect and add some tags, semantic tags or verbal tags to these impressions 
to indicate uh, the actual meaning or the actual value that you assign to them. So if you don't do this at all, then it's just whatever garbage comes to you in the course of the day by chance becomes your prompts. And that goes into God GPT, and that is what controls your experience. So what I'm saying here is that you should add these tags of transcendental meaning. See, that is the way to influence the process of becoming name and form by adding names, tags, designations, values to these experiences, to these impressions as they go in to the mind and are stored in the short-term memory. And then at night, again, before going to sleep, before entering Sushupti, you review them and add, reinforce those tags. And what are those tags? They're terms. The Buddha says, insofar only, Ananda, can one be born or grow old or die or pass away or reappear? In so far only is there any pathway for verbal expression. In so far only is there any pathway for terminology. In so far only is there any pathway for designation. In so far only is the range of wisdom. In so far only is the round kept going for there to be a designation as a thisness. That is to say, name and form together with consciousness. So the terminology, the designations, the tags, the values that we give our impressions, that we give our experiences, become the pathway for becoming, for manifestation, for experience. Because God GPT just like any good AI, is going to take these prompts very literally. But if we don't specify the value or the kind of the, the spin that we want to put on these experiences, it will just make up something. Like you go to chat GPT and you, you give it a prompt, you know, and if you're not very specific, you'll just get a very general kind of answer in return. And, you know, chatbots tend to hallucinate. <laughs> they tend to give you very plausible-sounding, confident-sounding answers that when you check them out, when you look them up, you find they're not even true. You know? So the same kind of thing happens with God GPT. When we give impressions... When we go to sleep at night, digest our day's experiences through the dreams, and then make a compressed seed and go into uh, Sushupti, if we have not added our directions, our labels, our designations, our values to those uh, experiences, to those impressions, we'll just get some nonsense back, you know? Garbage in, garbage out. And I call this God Vomit. It's from a novel by Cory Doctorow. He's talking about these AIs that are in orbit, right? And they just kind of do whatever they want because nobody can keep them from doing whatever they want. And one of the things they do is they drop these devices down to humans at, with no explanation and no warnings about, you know, what they're going to do or what they're capable of. And so he calls these God vomit because they can be like completely out to lunch, you know, do all kinds of weird stuff that you would never anticipate. So the same thing with God GPT. If you give it a nonsense prompt, you get a nonsense response. If you give it an unevaluated prompt, I mean, the response could be anything. It, it's, it's God vomit. It's just kind of random and usually not what we want. So the whole process of prompting the God GPT involves adding 
these labels, designations, to these impressions as we receive them, as we experience them in daily life, and also at night, like before going to sleep, we should meditate and review the day and add these labels to the prompts. This is prompt engineering that will bring the kind of results that we want. And what are these prompts? What are, I mean, what are these tags? What are these labels or designations? Mantras. Mantras. Transcendental sound vibrations. So by adding transcendental sound vibrations to the ordinary things that happen every single day, we can link them with God. They become service to God. They become worship. And then the results that we get are really very wonderful. For example, my poor monk friend who's struggling so hard with sexuality, right? If he was to just let go of that and instead study Tantra and worship the sex energy as the mother goddess, Kundalini, with beautiful mantras, and then not only would he get to enjoy life a lot more, but she would ultimately lead him to Shiva. Shiva is Brahman. Brahman is Nirvana. Nirvana. The same thing that Buddha taught, but just a different way of accessing. I mean, if you're one of those people who really doesn't care about sex, you can be celibate, and that's fine. But most of us aren't like that. Most of us have, you know, a healthy animal, <laughs> and it has, like, healthy animal needs. So if we don't get all neurotic about it, if we just uh, let, it, let it have what it needs, but give mantras along with it, see, or like our everyday experience uh, would happen. I was on my way on the plane, and uh, they lost my luggage. So now who knows where my bags are, right? Um, so instead of getting upset about it, instead of getting angry about it, instead of like getting uh, blaming and you know criticizing and. Uh, I chanted my mantra, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, and maintained even temperament. See, now these impressions are not going to generate anything negative. Not possible, because they're all tagged with the mantra. As I was experiencing them, I was chanting, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. That was going in the background. See? So as soon as we add these transcendental mantra tags or designations to our experiences, to our impressions, they have a whole different response from the God GPT. Now, instead of getting just kind of junk, but, you know, more material stuff, more material stuff, now we get more opportunities for service more opportunities to draw close to God. See, this sushupti, we might think that it's just a nothingness or emptiness, but it's actually a kind of fullness. It's fully causal. It's never the effect of anything, and that's Shiva. See, Jangrat or worldly consciousness is Brahma, the mode of passion. Dreams or Swapna consciousness is Vishnu, the maintenance of the creation. And deep sleep or Sushupti is Shiva, the destroyer. Because when we enter Sushupti, the whole world disappears. Even our dreams disappear. Everything. So he is the one who has the key to giving us everything that we need and want. And all we have to do is follow his instructions as given in the scriptures, chant his mantras, and everything else happens automatically. 
I can explain the reasoning behind it by means of this metaphor, this God GPT metaphor. But in the end, it always comes down to, <laughs> you have to chant the mantra. You have to follow the instructions in the scriptures. That's what they're for. And they will bring you ultimately to complete enlightenment. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.